Now remember, leave the talking to me. You do the talking. I'll do the laughing. You're up a creek, Jack. No kidding. Oh, hello. You're Mr. Ketch, aren't you? That's right. Investigation branch, Federal Department of Taxation and Revenue. This is Marty Burke, my offsider. Won't you come in, boys? A pleasure. Well, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Uh, is your husband home? I think he should be in on this, too. Well, he's upstairs for a moment. Can't we begin? Sure. You sold this house a few days ago, ma'am. Is that so? Why, yes. I got 30000 for it. Is there any law against that? I'll let you know if you'll answer me this, ma'am. In less than three months, you've sold this house twice and bought it back once. On those transactions, you've lost in all 20000 Well, whose money is it? That, ma'am, is the precise thing I want you to tell me. T-Men, the true-to-life adventures of those men whose job it is to discover and bring to account those citizens who, by concealment, deception, or fraud, evade their lawful taxes. T-Men, with Gordon Glenride as Jack Ketch. Here is Jack Ketch, one of this nation's T-Men, to tell you... The case of the Jack that house built. This is a great country. It takes a lot of money to run and keep running. That's why we have taxes. Taxes are scaled so that everyone pays a fair share of the cost according to his or her true income or profit. Let one citizen... Oh, no, not again. Never I'm alone... Catch investigation. I'm sorry Mr. Burke is not at the office today. Yes, I did hear the trouble, being his boss. Mr. Burke is confined to his bed with a chill. No, ma'am, I said a chill, not... It's a pleasure, you being the tenth inquirer. Marty Burke has more screwball ants. Johnny, is Marty Burke being... Marty passed away peacefully in his sleep at precisely 2.30. Oh, then in that case, he must have just called me long distance. He just rang you? What about me? Don't I count? He tried seven times, but said your line was busy. Women, he surmised. Women. I've answered that phone 27 times. Look, lover boy, I'm not interested in your batting average. All I came in here for... Oh. I see you've got Mr. Colon's file. Hmm? That's what Marty rang about. Pietro Colon's file. I knew his half-brother, semicolon. Comedy at your age. Is that wise? What about the file? Marty got it out yesterday after Mrs. Grace rang and made an appointment for today at 11.30. Marty thought you Who's might... Who's Mrs. Grace? She's the... De- <sighs> Hold it, Pat. Yeah? Jack, uh, Charlie on the desk. There's a Mrs. Grace Grace to see Marty Burke. A uh, Who? Mrs. Grace Grace. Yeah, what's this double talk? That's what I wanted. I didn't know whether she was disgrace or that. <laughs> Charlie, put her in booth number one. Oh, and Charlie. Yeah, Jack? Cut out the comedy. Jealous. Apart from the fact that her father was frightened by a double barrel shotgun, what do you know about this Mrs. Grace Grace? Me? Not a thing. Swell. At least it doesn't complicate things, does it? But Marty says she's laying a complaint about this Pietro Colon. Something about a deal on a house that went haywire. Why not go to a lawyer? What does she think we are? Marty says she's a blonde. Well, of course we'll help her. I might have known Marty Burke would be lying in his bed pretending to be a black widow spider. Mrs. Grace Grace was a blonde. Once. As for that deal on the house, all Gracie needed was a house number, and she'd have made a swell Cape Codder herself, right down to the termites. So I shut my eyes and listened, and listened, and listened. So you can appreciate, Mr. Ketch, I have nobody to turn to but you. I shall have to lean on you. Uh, 
I'm kind of wobbly right now, Mrs. Grace. Why not call me Grace? I did. You know, I still don't see how we can help you. I, I mean, what's this uh, colon character actually done? Done? For Pete's sake, do I have to go over it a third time? Unanimous. So you sold him a house for 20000 and lost 10 on the deal. It happens. We can't get you your dough back. I know you can't. The Pietro Colin can be made a chicken dinner another way. I hope it tastes as sweet as revenge. There's enough gravy. Get yourself a spoon. That house is worth every cent of 30000 and Pietro knows it. Matter of fact, I refused 40000 two months ago. Let it go kind of cheap, didn't you? Well, I needed the money. So he'll sell it for 40 after paying 20 so... So what? <laughs> so what'll you boys do with the 20,000 profit you make on the deal? <laughs> Not a thing, sweetheart, apart from a small penalty. What about income tax? Colon's a wine importer, not a real estate speculator or dealer. He buys a house, sells it at a profit, no tax. But that's outrageous. It's almost criminal. No tax. So it looks as though you've lost your dough and your revenge. Colon will pay tax on his income as a wine importer. The profit on the house is for free. Is that so now? All right, Mr. Kitch. We'll see who comes best out of this deal. <laughs> a fine thing. Allowing a widow to be robbed. Thanks for calling. It was your deal. Don't blame us. Thanks for nothing. A real sweetie was Gracie. I wiped her from my mind quicker than a general wipes a private and let the ensuing weeks drift by in orderly confusion. Marty Burke's cold got cured. The end of the fiscal year was coming up. It got very quiet. So very quiet, in fact, that one could almost sneak in a game of golf at the weekend. Marty and I did. A 45-foot putt, and you missed it. Can I help it if they don't make round balls anymore? Hey, where's the tenth tee? It used to be... Oh, yeah. Look out! It's a beat! Hey! Sorry, fellas, but uh, you did ask for it, walking right in front like that, just as I drove up. Oh, our fault? Forget it. Hi. Marty, uh, take that golf ball out of your mouth and smile for the gentleman. Don't you know an Adam's apple when it's ripe? Why don't they put up a sign there? That hidden tea's downright lethal. Oh, well, no great harm done. Could have been worse. Uh, by the way, did either of you see where my ball went? You mean after it left my eye? Didn't your partner see? Well, I'm uh, afraid I'm having a solo round, just working up a nine hole first. I'll tell you what, why, why don't we go around together? And make it a three ball? Well, why not? Sure. That way we don't get killed. <laughs> Swell. So it's me. I'm Marty Burke. This is Jack Ketch. Glad to know you. I'm Pete Colvin. I know your half brother. Pietro Colvin? Wine importer? Yeah, that's right. You seem interested. I am. But uh, let's shoot a little golf first while I think of another car. <laughs> After that, my golf wasn't very good. I ask you, only a hold out and won twice during the next nine holes. What way is that to play golf? After a shower, we went to the bar, and then I found what it is that the vintner buys that's half so precious as the wine he sells. It was whiskey. Pete Collin put away half a bottle while Marty and I were killing a couple of beers. No more, fellas. You boys will be getting high. Look, let's eat someplace. What do you say? Mm, fine. But not here. This club is strictly for golf only. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what. Let's all go to my house and get the little woman to rustle up a plate of this and that. Huh? What do you say? Will the little woman like that? <laughs> Are you kidding? She loves to have me bring my pals home. Come on, let's go. I'll lead the way in my jalopy. You guys follow. Pausing only while I phoned Pat Frew to tell her not to wait dinner, Marty Burke and I followed this interesting character to his home. It was in a very expensive area and was quite a shack. Our two cars scrunched to a stop on the gravel drive and we got out. Hey. 
some place you got here, Pete. Get a load of it, Jack. Mm. You like it? Wait till you see inside. A sweet setup. Ah, very, very nice. And expensive, if I'm any judge. Oh, fellas, you're wrong. Dead wrong. This was the cheapest house in the world. My friend, there is no such thing these days as a cheap house. No? <laughs> Wouldn't you call a house for free and 20000 in your kick cheap? That sounds it. Ah, uh, how come you got yourself such a sweet deal, Pete? Hmm? Well, fellas, I'll tell you. You see, a crackpot dame owned this dump and wanted 30000 for it. I gave her twenty. Uh-huh. Then, I sold it back to her for 40000 you what? You said she was a screwball. Okay, so that gave you a profit of 20000 But how come you've still got the house? <laughs> Don't be a dope. After the sale, I married the day. Mama Company! Mama was in bed. Mama stayed in bed. Well, I didn't need a line-up to know that Mama was the former Mrs. Grace Grace. And I didn't need the roof to fall in on me to tell me that somewhere in this deal there was a very smelly double-cross. Can you guess who the victim was? <laughs> no, you'd never guess in a million years. So I'll tell you. It was me. <laughs> We'll return to Jack Ketch and the case of the Jack that house built in just a moment. Meanwhile... We return you to T-Men with Jack Ketch continuing the case of the Jack that house built. Here at the Special Investigation Branch of the Federal Department of Taxation and Revenue, you learn a lot about people. You learn, for instance, that not one of the tens of thousands of callers we get each year is there without a motive and an axe to grind. With everyone on the make... Why should Mrs. Grace Grace have been any different? Well, I now knew that I'd been crossed up somewhere. But where? Set a thief to catch a thief. And get a dame to trap another dame. So I called on Pat Frew. Why do you say more coffee, Johnny? I'd spill. Make it a slug. Stiff. You know, I ought to part your hair with a meat chopper. Coming here at this time of the night... And kill the goose? You said it, not me. Here, try this for size. Hmm. Hmm. Good. Like to tell me about it? Well, I didn't come here to catch a number 47 bus. No, but you could have... Oh, skip it. Talk, blast you. I told Pat the score. She sat and smoked, looking at me the while with those shrewd green eyes of hers. No wonder I lost the thread of the conversation several times. You know, one of these days I'll have to marry this girl. And as soon as I make a million, I will. I think you're wrong, Johnny. I can't see where the department's been gypped. How can it have been? Me? I got a nose, and it's busy. Forget that schnozzle and use your head. I figure that... Gracie lost 10000 on the deal so far. And Pete Collins made a cool twenty grand tax free So what? Isn't that what you told the old bag a couple of months ago when she came in screaming? Don't you start. Yeah, I'd sure like to know why she came in at all. What was the racket? Sooling us tea men out of the guy she ups and marries a few weeks later. I don't get it. Uh, could it have been an act? Just to find out for sure that Colon's profit would be tax-free? What would she care? At that time, she didn't know she was going to marry. Hey, wait a minute. What if they'd already fixed to get married? That would mean that they'd cooked up a scheme, and I, I can't see the point. Sure, he gets 20000 tax-free, but it's her money. 
She loses 10000 maybe twenty, if that house isn't worth the last price she gave for it. Yeah, suppose it isn't. Suppose it's worth only thirty. That would mean she loses twenty on the deal. Which twenty is in Colon's pocket. They're man and wife. They're square, as I say. Where does it get them? Yeah, I wonder. Pat, first thing tomorrow, I'm going to get that shack valued. I'll bet you a night out with all the trimmings... It's worth only 30000 Chicken feed. That's what I'll buy you for dinner. Next day, I had an expert go over the joint during the absence of the colon couple. Opinion? It wasn't worth a cent more than thirty grand. Gracie had done 20000 cold, or she would if she tried to sell. Now, why would a smart woman do a thing like that? Two days later, I knew. Look, Jack, I still don't get it. Here we are, herring out to this legless penthouse, and for what? They can tell us to just go jump in the lake. They haven't got a lake. Marty, I'm playing a hunch. People don't do peculiar things with no reason. What about my Aunt Fanny? You've got me. Well, uh, here's the house of mystery coming up around the next bend. No, you're right, Marty. There's nothing we can do except ask questions. Sometimes you get funny answers. Silly ones, too. Hey, is this the joint with the signboard? What the... Here, pull up, Marty, quick. Hey, will you get a load of that sign? Sold. Dewpoint Real Estate Company. Now, do you think it's a screwball setup? The birds have flown. But I can't think why. But at least we know there's a why, so let's go find out. Where next, bub? You guess. Do point real estate it is. The real estate office was closed for lunch. Marty and I went back to the federal building. Promptly at two o'clock, I phoned through. Yes, the house had been sold. No, they couldn't tell me the buyer's name or the price. Where were Mr. and Mrs. Colin living now? I'm sorry, I have no idea, sir. Nuts. That dumb dame at the other end's as good as two men away with a flu. Why didn't you ask to speak to the boss? Because right at this moment, the boss is in free flight in an orbit round the moon. Don't you think I'd have talked to the boss if he'd been in? Now, what do we do? Until details of that sale are filed uptown and the deeds start going the rounds, we can't find out a thing. But for Pete's sake, there must be somebody we can get some information from. What about the lawyers? Don't they sit in on deals like this? And what do we do? Bring up every law office in the city and ask them if they handle this deal? You're slipping, fatso. Okay. Then how about this? Call in the cops to pick up the colon couple. On what charge? Setting fire to haystacks? Make it murder. Whose? Yours. If you don't get off my back. Oh, quit snarling the pair of you. Look, what could be simpler than turning up the Dewpoint Real Estate Company in a trade directory? Find out the manager's address, drive out to his house, and get the details of the sale. Okay. You thought of it, you do it. Marty, get a bunch of telephonists ringing the hotels. Every darn one in the capital. And don't overlook the airlines. I got a nasty feeling something's being put over. And I want the colon couple. And what are you going to do, oh, chief investigator? Me? I'm going to sit here and let my mouth water. And so I did, for a while. There was a fine, overripe smell about that house deal now. And dead whales are very seldom found in these parts. Pat Frood came back from searching the trade directory. All she got was a wet thumb. They're not listed, Johnny. But that's crazy. Unless they opened up after the directory was compiled. Yeah, it could be. How are you going, Marty? Uh, we've tried every decent hotel in town. Wait on. What's the colon's former residence phone number? Hmm? Oh, it's there in my pad for all the good it'll do. Benz, you never know your luck in a big city. If there is anyone there, they won't know where the colons are. Hello? Is this Mrs. Colon? It is. Hold the line, please. 
Well, boss? I hate smug women. But what could I do? Marty Burke and I were in a car so fast, it's not true, even though it is. Twenty minutes later, we reached the scene of the crime. Now, remember, leave the talking to me. You do the talking. I'll do the laughing. You're up a crick, Jack. No kidding. Oh, hello. You're Mr. Kitch, aren't you? That's right. Investigation branch, Federal Department of Taxation and Revenue. This is Marty Burke, my offsider. Won't you come in, boys? A pleasure. Well, gentlemen, what can I do for you? Is your husband home? I think he should be in on this, too. He's upstairs for a moment. Can't we begin? Sure. You sold this house a few days ago, ma'am. Is that so? Why, yes. I got 30000 for it. Is there any law against that? I'll let you know if you'll answer me this, ma'am. In less than three months, you've sold this house twice and bought it back once. On those transactions, you've lost in all 20000 Well, whose money is it? That, ma'am, is the precise thing I want you to tell me. Well, well, the boys in the golf club. Haven't seen you around lately. What about a drink, huh? We're here on business, Colin. Yeah? Didn't your bride tell you we rang? We're tea men, Colin. What, you mean... Oh. <laughs> Everything's okay with my tax return, isn't it? I put it in yesterday, so it's well ahead of the due date. I couldn't care less about that. What we're here for is to discover why your wife is so darn cheerful at losing 20,000 fish over the buying and selling of this house. Well, she should care. She lost 20 grand, sure. But she lost it to me on those deals, and what's mine is hers. That means that between you, you haven't lost a dime. That's right. <sighs> well, I guess it's your hobby. Come on, Marty. Of course, Dew Point Real Estate's had a bad year. Hmm? Hey. What do you know about Dew po- now, Wait a minute. You. That's the record, isn't it? You own that company. Sure. Any law against it? Dew Point lost 20000 on these deals because the firm owned the house. Ah, I get it. Hubby here gets 20000 tax-free, and the firm claims a loss of the same amount. Which means that it can earn 20000 to replace its losses and gets that tax-free. What a setup. Yeah, I thought I was kind of smart myself. Of course, the thing I like about it is that I can make a profit of twenty grand tax free and it's legal. Mind you, Mr. Ketch, if it hadn't been strictly legal, I wouldn't have had a thing to do sure, with it. Sure, sure. I know how you feel. Um, tell me, Mrs. Collin, have you filed a current tax declaration claiming a loss of twenty thousand on the real estate company? Well, I most certainly have. But there's not going to be any trouble over it, surely. From us, no. From the police, yes. Well, for Pete's sake, why? Tell them, Marty. Conspiracy to defraud is an indictable offense. And any capital lost as the result of a criminal act is not deductible for taxation purposes. Furthermore... Furthermore, all traceable monies profited as the result of a criminal act are forfeit. Oh, no. What does that mean? It means that between you... You've lost 40,000 smackers and your house. But don't worry about the house. We've a nice big house to take its place. And this will kill you. We can get it for you tax-free. The court ruled as I predicted. The Collins were lucky to get away with two years each. In all fairness, I should say that I believe they had no criminal intent when they cooked up this scheme. They saw what they believed to be a flaw in taxation law and tried to take advantage of it. Too bad they slipped up. If ever you get a brilliant idea to save on your tax, read the rules pretty carefully. You'll find that most times, where we can't protect the people, the police can It'd be tough to go to sleep thinking you were on Easy Street and wake up on the rock pile like the Colons. This is a great country. 
It costs a lot of money to run and to keep running. And that's why we have taxes. Taxes are scales so that everyone pays a fair share. You have been listening to T-Men, the true-to-life adventures of men whose job it is to discover and bring to account those citizens who, by concealment, deception, or fraud, evade their lawful taxes. T-Men features Gordon Glenwright as Jack Ketch. The case of the Jack That House Built was written and directed by Donovan Joyce. All names used in this broadcast were fictitious and bore no relation to any living person. T-Men is a Donovan Joyce production. This is Hawk McGuire speaking. (laughs) 